can you hear me and see my uh, slides? Yep. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, so thank you, Marco, and thank you the, to the organizers. And uh, thank you all for connecting to this talk. So my name is Theodore and I'm a PhD student at Stanford. So today I'll present a re recent work that I did with my advisor, Andrea Montanari and uh, Michael Celentano, who is also one of the speakers this week. And uh, I believe that he will speak about uh, his own work on high dimensional statistics uh, on Friday. So the title is Minimum Complexity Interpolation in Random Features Models. Um, so I consider neural networks in some sense, which is the theme of this track. But uh, instead of uh, considering gradient trained neural networks, uh, I consider uh, infinite width neural networks that are solutions of convex optimization program over the space of measures. So, okay, so let's start. So I'll start uh, by recalling the definition of RKHS methods, like kernel methods. So in neural networks jargon, so this corresponds to neural networks trained in the lazy training regime. Uh, so we consider the non-parametric supervised learning setting. So we are given uh, n data points xi, yi, where the covariates uh, vectors xi are id sample from a probability space xp, and the response variables yi is a noisy measurement of a target function f star. So a popular method to fit this data is uh, like our kernel machines. So here I'll give a different construction of reproducing kernel Hilbert space, uh, so different than the one that is usually given uh, during lectures. So we start from a weight probability space omega with uh, measure mu. Uh, so we consider um, features, a featureization map, uh, like uh, which uh, for any weight w associate a squared integrable function phi, like w uh, on the space of covariates. So for example, as like uh, you can think about them as uh, like being an activation function sigma applied to the inner product of X and W. And so we define the RKHS uh, uh, that the denote here by F2 uh, to be all functions FXA that can be written as integral over the weight space of A, W, phi, X, W, uh, so mid, uh, W. And so like uh, these functions will have squared integral uh, density A. Um, I mean, like a function A. So uh, this construction is equivalent to the standard one with associated kernel K x1, x2. Um, so you can think about these functions uh, as being infinite with two layers neural networks with first layer weights W, nonlinearity uh, phi, and second layer weights uh, AW. So now given this RKHS, uh, we can fit the data um, using um, like a convex loss L and doing an empirical uh, risk minimization with this added RKHS norm regularization. Uh, so not that this is a convex optimization problem, but on an infinite dimensional space. However, so this is a celebrated result. Uh, this problem can be solved uh, efficiently so thanks to the representer theorem, which guarantees that the solution A hat W is in uh, this uh, fixed n-dimensional subspace spanned by the phi xi. So here we only need to solve a convex optimization problem over n parameters ci. So okay, so we can solve kernel methods efficiently. So what about their statistical properties? Uh, so we denote F2R, the ball of radius error in the RKHS. Uh, so schematically, the generalization error of learning F star in F2R is upper bounded by R over the square root of the number of samples. So in other words, we expect RKHS methods to generalize better for target functions that have lower RKHS norm. So the problem of these common methods is that they suffer from the curse of dimensionality. So in high dimension, these F2R balls 
will only contain very smooth functions and uh, kernel methods will fail for all other functions. So here I took the example of X uh, and W uniformly distributed on the sphere, uh, like this uh, inner product uh, activation function. And so for any target function F star and number of samples uh, between D at the power K and D at the power K plus one. Uh, so we showed with Gorbani, May and Montanari that the test error of like any kernel methods uh, will be lower bounded by this quantity up to a vanishing uh, additive term. So this is F star projected orthogonally to the subspace of degree K polynomials. So meaning that the best we can do is uh, fit uh, degree, K degree K polynomial activity like um, approximation to F star. And uh, so you can indeed check that this uh, F2 square root of n ball only contain degree k polynomials. So like you can do the simulation and even for d equal 30, which is not exactly high dimensional, uh, you need like 20, 30,000 samples to learn a cubic polynomial approximation. And this is true for any target functions. And okay, so it's kind of disappointing given that there are classes of functions that can be efficiently approximated by neural networks and we expect like to be able to do much better on them. So for example, take um, uh, like the task of learning a single neuron. Um, so F star phi X double star. Uh, so it's very easy to represent uh, as a two layer neural networks. So simply put a direct at W star. Um, so the problem of Dirac's is that they are not squared integrable. So in particular, F star is not in the RKHS. And so the reason it's uh, difficult to learn a single neuron with kernels is that in order to approximate this Dirac, uh, we need a, a, like a, a, like a, a function A that uh, has a L2 norm that explodes. Uh, and so we won't be able to generate as well on them. So in simple ID is uh, therefore to consider instead of L2 norm, uh, this LP norm of A uh, with P between one and two. Uh, and the reason is that this LP norm spinalize singular distributions less heavily. So we fit this infinite width two layers neural networks, but now penalize the function A with this LP norm. Um, so these neural networks were introduced by Benjo and all uh, in 2006. Uh, and they call them the convex neural networks. And this is because now the optimization problem is uh, convex, but uh, like in the space of measures. So we have inclusion uh, strict between the balls. So F2 is in FP, which is included in F1. So the FP balls correspond to richer and richer function class uh, as P decreases. So FP captures better functions that are highly dependent on a low dimensional projection. So in particular for P equal one, uh, we can approximate a direct by a sequence of densities, uh, like a functions A with uh, uniformly bounded L1 norm. So which is not the case for L2. So in particular back uh, indeed verified that F1 is adaptive to unknown underlying linear structure and beat the cross of dimensionality uh, for functions uh, that depends on the low dimensional projection of the covariance. Uh, on the other hand, so F2 is not adaptive. So it does not differentiate between like whether the function has a low dimensional structure or not. And only care about like global smoothness properties. So, okay, so in the rest of the talk, I will focus on these FP function spaces. And I will consider finding the minimum norm interpolating solution uh, to the data. So minimizing this LP uh, norm of A uh, subject to this interpolation constraints. Um, so this corresponds to taking the uh, regularization parameter to zero in the empirical risk uh, minimization. Um, okay, so why uh, look at this interpolating solution? So, okay, so one is conceptually, this is the critical part of the optimization problem. And the uh, second is uh, correspond to the modern practice of training until interpolation. Uh, so our problem is a convex problem. 
but on an infinite dimensional space. So in the case of p equal two, we assume that there is like a representative theorem, uh, which makes the optimization very easy. However, for p different than two, it's not clear what to do. And uh, okay, so in the case of p equal one, Benjo and his team and Bag proposed like different incremental algorithm. Uh, however, they either don't have a convergence guarantees or each step is NP hard. So here instead we consider uh, like the standard approach of replacing the density mu by a, an empirical density mu M that is finitely supported. So we sample M ID weights, double J, uh, and we replace the like this infinitely dimensional integration by this um, sum over the double J's. So now, um, um, okay, so like this is also known as the random features model. And it was originally introduced as randomized approximation to uh, kernel methods. And so here, okay, so now uh, instead of having this infinite dimensional problem, we, just, uh, we have this finite width problem, uh, which is much easier to solve with A that is uh, in the R at the power M. So we can ask several questions about this FP spaces and this random features approximation. And uh, so in this talk, I will uh, focus on the following. So um, how large M needs to be for the finite width solution to approximate the infinite width uh, problem. So for P equal two, for example, we showed with May and Montanari that uh, it's necessary and sufficient for M to be bigger than like N. So what about uh, P less than two? Uh, so let me just describe very quickly the setting and assumptions. So, okay, so we have like NID samples, so we don't uh, assume much about them, just uh, X is as bounded support. So here I just defined the kernel matrix. Uh, which is the kernel evaluated at the training points. Uh, okay, so we have given, so we are given M weights double J's, uh, ID samples from mu, and I denote this phi and J's, uh, the random features vectors uh, associated to double J, so evaluated at the data points X1 to Xn. And I also introduced this white N features, psi N W, um, which is just Kn at the power of minus one half phi n, and they're whitened because their covariance is just identity. Um, so we will show that the random features approximation concentrates on the infinite width solution, conditional on the realization of the data, and instead uh, like uh, exploit the randomness of the weights double jurors to uh, show concentration. And so like to see how, so for example, like phi and j conditional on x are id random vectors in Rn because these double j's are id. Uh, so for our result to hold, uh, we will only make assumptions about the feature map. Uh, and uh, these uh, conditions only need to be verified conditional on y and x. So, okay, I'll just like skip over them very quickly. So. Uh, we need sub Gaussianity of the features, uh, Lipschitz uh, continuity of uh, these uh, like neurons, and we need a technical small bold property. And so basically, um, we expect uh, this sub Gaussianity and small bold property to be uh, very mild assumptions. Uh, however, they're hard to uh, like check in practice. So I can uh, go back uh, on these assumptions during the discussion of offline. So here is the main results. Uh, so for P uh, strictly between one and two, so we assume like A1 to A3 to hold conditionally on Y and X. Then with probability at least one minus CM at the power CN. So like on the realization of the double Js, so we have this following bound on the L2 norm uh, squared of the like, distance between F at RF and the infinite width solution. And so this is given by the max of N log M over N and add N log M at the power P over P minus one over M squared. 
So, okay, so to interpret this result, I note that typically uh, this quantity is bounded by square root of n. And so in order for this RF approximation uh, to be a good approximation of the infinite limit, uh, we need m to be bigger than ed log n at the power, so the max of two and p minus one half and p minus one. Uh, okay, let me make two remarks. So we don't expect the bound to be optimal. For example, for p equal two, we expect m only to be uh, need to be bigger than n log n, so this should be sufficient. Um, so instead of two, and second, uh, so um, as p decreases to one, so it is bound. So p over the minus one half over p minus one diverges. So okay, for fixed p away from one, so m only need to be like polynomial in n. So in some sense, this is tractable. But when p uh, goes to one, so this exponent diverges, and so uh, like uh, the RF approximation cannot uh, efficiently um, uh, solve this F1 uh, problem. And uh, there is this counterexample of learning a single neuron. Okay, so here are some, uh, so here are some uh, numerical experiments. Uh, we take a single neuron, uh, X uniformly distributed on the sphere, double Gaussian, and we take D equals 30. So on the left, I fixed the number of samples n to be 150, and I plotted the test error against uh, so the number of features, so for different p. Um, okay, so you can see uh, that the test error decreases as the number of features increases uh, until it settles on a repeating value, uh, which corresponds to this uh, infinite roots solution. So for p equal two, thanks to the representative theorem, I can compute the infinite width solution. And this is this dashed uh, black line. So for other, I can't uh, compute it. Um, so, okay, so second remark, it seems that in order to reach this uh, plateau, we need uh, more and more features, which is consistent uh, with our bound that is worse and worse as p goes to one, and especially for p equal one, uh, so we don't reach the plateau. And this is because we need a, an exponential number of features. Uh, so on the right, so I fixed the number of features uh, to be very large in order to have like a rough approximation of the infinite width limit. And I plot the test error as a function of the sample size. Uh, so we see as p decreases, the test error decreases, uh, so which is consistent uh, with the notion that the class FP captures better and better functions that are highly dependent on low dimensional projections that they provide. Uh, so, okay, I don't have much time, but let me just give you some intuition about the proof. Uh, so we want to compare two problems. So these two infinite widths and finite widths minimum uh, interpolation problems. So we can uh, consider uh, so the dual problems, so I just skip over the details, but basically now these uh, two problems uh, are defined on the same parameter space. So lambda in Rn. Um, and, um, and we are making like here uh, a very uh, simple observation. So the primal uh, problem is uh, over parameterized, uh, high dimensional problem, which is difficult to control. And this is usually why it's difficult to study over parameters problem. Um, on the other hand, this dual problem is low dimensional, like under parameters, and we can use classical techniques like uniform convergence arguments. Um, okay, so here, just quick remark, we recover a representative theorem for P between one and two. Um, Okay, so here it's slightly more involved than the case for the case for p equal two. Um, okay, so okay, I skip over this slide and just directly go to the conclusion. But basically, 
uh, just quickly. So this problem, uh, like the finite width problem, this uh, landscape concentrate and this landscape. And that's why we can compare the two solutions. And so let me conclude. Uh, so first, one of the things that I find interesting in, in this uh, like work is that now we have like this access to these uh, FP spaces that are spaces of infinite width two layers neural networks that are tractable and not RKHS. Uh, on the other hand, uh, people can be interested in studying the effect of regularization in random features models. Uh, with, uh, like, uh, so here we showed that um, when you have enough overparameterization, it reduces to uh, studying this corresponding infinite width model, uh, which is much simpler. Uh, third, so we introduced this new proof, like very simple proof to show the double descent phenomenon. Uh, and that does not rely on strong assumptions uh, like Gaussian data or linear model. Uh, and when I say double descent here, I mean that the tester of the model uh, does not expose when adding more parameters, uh, but it instead that concentrates on a certain value. And the mechanism here is very simple. It's just uniform concentration of the dual to an infinite uh, width problem. And so you have uh, several future directions so studying the generalization property of, of FP, non-zero regularization. And uh, the most interesting case is P equal one. Uh, this is the one that breaks the curse of dimensionality. And the question is like, is there an efficient algorithm that uh, solves this uh, F1 problem? Uh, okay, that's it. Thank you.